Hey guys, it's it's Foxola here on this uh, very rainy evening, cold and rainy, and we're getting rain, but I'm sure other people are getting <sighs> snow. <laughs> uh, I made a kind of fun discovery um, that I'm going to share with you. So let us adjourn to the uh, uh, discovery department. <laughs> Okay, as you can see, I recently acquired a freestyle, really big notebook in lime. Ooh. And I would say, I wouldn't really call it really big. It's not terribly big. It's uh, 10 by 7. 10 by 7 by 2. And I would say it is really thick, too. <laughs> but hey, that's okay. So um, I will, I am using it for, to start with, oh, I'm sure we'll have many uses. I am using it for my video game, Spore. I play one video game. It is Spore, and it's from, it was Spore, Spore get, was given birth to in 2008, so it's an oldie, and it's, uh, <coughs> you can, it'll only run on your computer in compatibility mode, and even then it's still a little um, cantankerous, but I respect it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a great game. Uh, I can uh, if people are interested, I'd be happy to tell you all about it in another video. Um, I, ha I actually have a playlist for Spore on my on my YouTube channel. So, uh, but basically, I'm using this to organize the different um, aspects of Spore. So I've got, I started using the index. <coughs> um, I don't know if you can read these, but each, each of these is the name of a planet. And so on page one is just like the, uh, my planets. And yes, I added some washi. Uh, my planets that I'm, that I'm playing in alphabetical order we've got the planet and then the species and then their what the species eats um so last night i was playing um the game on the remedicia planet the species that it's from that uh, lives there that i created is called sagan and the sagan is an herbivore and so Spore is, you, it's a, they call it a god game. You create your own um, species and it evolves through the various stages of evolution. So you started in, and I wasn't going to explain about Spore, but that's okay. <laughs> you start in the cell stage and then it, you advance into uh, the creature stage and then into tribal, then civilization, and ultimately space. The, the first several stages don't really require a lot of note taking, but once you get out into space, there's a lot to keep track of. Like if you, you can do terraforming and that requires notes. And if you're trading, uh, you need to keep track of that. And like who you, what empires to avoid. <laughs> and what ones are cool and who would be a good ally and there's just a lot to keep track of in the space stage so I thought this note this book would be really fun for that um, so I've got my notes from from yesterday I started in here so I'm using my page numbers this is page 27 for Remedicia which is listed uh, in the index, page 27, Remedicia, and I've allocated two pages 
for each planet. To start with, I suppose I could try and rearrange them otherwise, you know, if I find there's not enough. Or write smaller. <laughs> but actually, I've left it um, blank. I haven't filled it all in. There's two other planets after Remedicia. There's Sastor and then Tintagel. Great name, huh? <laughs> um, but I haven't started pages for them yet. I've just got the one I was working on last night and the index. So, okay, that's your <clears throat> a brief introduction to Spore. What I really wanted um, to tell you about was looking at this lovely book. Um, it's just the cover is just not going to make it, you know. It's just the weight of the book is going to start tearing the cover before, you know, before too long, no matter how careful you are with this. And that concerns me. Um, anyway, the cover made me nervous. So I, uh, my first inclination was to go and get a Bible bag for it um, because that would be about the right size. I had a Bible bag many but, years um, ago. I remember that they're very handy because they have, a lot of times they have shoulder straps, they at least have handles, and then they have like sleeves that you could just fit this, slide this right into the sleeve, and it would be protected, you can haul it around, it's in its own bag, so you just grab the bag and not and you're not messing with the book you know you're just opening it very carefully so I looked at a whole bunch of those and they didn't really bring my chimes so the other day I was rearranging furniture and I hauled my big old dresser that way I was using for storage in the living room all the way back here to this room and I emptied out some drawers and in the drawer I found I found a a oh. um, what do they call it it's a folder a presentation folder um, so I found this old presentation folder and I just think it's so pretty with the marble and it's nice and shiny and it's pretty stable but it's also flexible. And I was just like, oh, I remember I used to have a whole bunch of these. These are nice. And so I sat it on my table right next to my really big notebook and just kept looking at Bible bags. <laughs> Duh. Then it dawned on me. Wait a minute! Ah! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's... I wonder. I just wonder. So, yeah, here we go. I cut it down. I took the pockets out. I kind of tried to preserve what was already folded. And I need to trim this a bit. But these are made by Oxford. And the line, I guess, is Esselt. E-S-S-E-L-T. Um... So I just went like this, and I just traced it around. Well, I took it apart, okay? I unglued all the edges and stuff. I'll show you in a minute. But I took, I got it um, deconstructed, and then I just sort of traced the back, the spine, just kind of rolling it like this in the front. And I left, as much overlap as I could and just tucked the front of these the front edge in but I realized it's not really it wasn't big enough I needed a bigger flap so I took the pockets which I had cut off and just reattached them to the edges to make it longer so now this is just just a sleeve, really, and it just folds in like this. And I use just some decorative, decorative tape here to join the left, the old pocket, with the side. And I'm going to reinforce it with some more tape. But this needs a little more work. But this is this is the idea. So now here, 
you spend uh, about a dollar and you need just a little and some tape money get some tape you need scissors and tape and a presentation folder with pockets not the ones with the um, brad things not the the prongs not the prong ones not that you need to get ones just with the pockets and I was going to order up a whole bunch more of these marbleized ones because I think they're really pretty and I was going to use them for other things but that's kind of an, a lot of money because I would have had to buy a box of 25 and I mean they come they're about $30 but you know and they come in a you can get a variety you can get 25 all purple or 25 all black or 25 all green or all blue I think or you can get a mixture of you know like four black three green you know purple blue so some of each of the four colors so I was headed in that direction because I'm planning on getting another really big notebook I was planning in that direction, but I was at the dollar store today, and I thought, well, I'll just look. Maybe they've got something cheaper, and I can get a variety of them. So this is what I found. So this is okay. This is what I'm talking about. With the pockets, okay. There's no, no prongs, okay. No prongs, just plain. Okay, like this. This this one has holes perforated in it, which is okay. So what I would just do, you know, I could make several covers for this one book too. So anyway, what I did then was I unglued all this, all this, this all, pulled it apart okay carefully so that I had more more cardboard to work with and I took off the pockets so then I worked with this this center fold I worked with that so I lined this up here like this and so then you just cut it down So it's going to be like this, and you cut it down. Hello, <laughs> you know, I, it's just a nice. I think it's a great solution. You know, personally, I'm not wild about the pink camouflage, but you know, it doesn't look so bad, and it doesn't have to match the book or anything. I mean, if you want to, you can. So I got, and I found five that I thought would be acceptable. So I'll show you. A dollar each. A dollar each. This is neat. It's got like a, a very subtle dragon on there. First I thought it was bandana, but it's cooler than that. The only thing about this one is they have the holes punched for you to put in, in a loose leaf binder. So you've got six six holes to kind of have to figure out what you're going to do with but you might be able to put a um, you know put a charm through them or maybe put your an elastic around them somehow or just cover them up with washi tape or stickers or excuse me just you know think of a creative way to camouflage them if you don't like them. So this book would look like this. So you see the holes, you can see a little bit of green pe peeking through there, but no big. And so that's the back. Yeah, there is a lot of stuff on the back, but I can't do anything about that one. And I'll just show you these. I love tie-dye. The only thing I don't like is that they actually went and wrote tie-dye on the back. Eh. But I love tie-dye. I to die for tie-dye. 
<laughs> Tie-dye is to die for. <laughs> so that's pretty. That's really pretty. See, that's where tie-dye is and you'll be cutting it. You know what? Oh, wow. You could almost make this a, a trifold. Wait a minute. Let me see if I can, if it'll work. If I can put, line this up with this, right? Ugh. Okay. That's good too, isn't it? Not bad. Or actually, I guess it would go this way. That's not a bad idea either. Now, who was it that uses cereal boxes? Pocket full of vintage? Was she the one that was always cutting down cereal boxes? Similar kind of a thing. Maybe it was pocket full of vintage. I'm not positive. Anyway, this is good because it's like, again, it's got the holes, but they're just perforated. So they're, it's solid if you're just careful with them. Now this has, actually, this lines up in such a way that you see the, a lot of printing there. I don't know, might, that might need to be disguised. So here's another tie-dye one. I love this one. Isn't that great? I mean, it's just paper. It's cheap, but it's sturdy. And I think it's going to do a good job. So I'm excited. But you got the tie-dye thing on the back. But I'm excited. And last one. I love green. Green's one of my favorite colors, especially this shade of green or darker. You know, the ones with a bit of the avocado green and olive green, the, the yellower, darker yellowy green. Not so much the yeah, bluish this is pretty, green. Kind of pretty cover. It's almost got like a, a cross on it. But actually you see down there it's got a winged lion, which is unusual. And they had another one of these folders. I think it was pink. It was either pink or purple. And this design was really, it had a very subtle, it was pink, I think. Like it had a skull in it. And I don't like stuff with skulls. So it's, that's creepy to me, but <laughs> two each is all. So anyway, I'm just sharing my idea with those of you, I hope you find it interesting and maybe a little inspiring. I'm just pulling off my little bit of tapey leftover stuff here. And I'm going to find my scissors and um, refine this cover. So this is, I don't know if you can see, but there's some little slots here. That's where you're supposed to, you were supposed to put your your business card. Oh, I see here. I could still put my business card in there. That's cool. There's those little slots for the corners in here. <laughs> I could do that. Oh, that's funny. So anyway, there you go. That's my thought. That's my contribution. And I'm going to get this fixed up and then I'm going to do some latch hook. <laughs> That'll, that'll keep me going until bedtime, I think. <laughs> so, this has been Fox, and thanks for watching. Have a terrific night, guys. Bye.